Welcome back everyone and uh, today I just wanted to run through where I'm up to with the Hypercube Evolution build. You can probably tell I'm a little bit croaky still. I've had uh, a cold and uh, actually ended up having a few days off work and are still uh, recovering from that now. But I've managed to sort of move forward a little bit with the project. A few bits and pieces have arrived from China so I've got them in there and I'm starting to look at Marlon. Marlon 2 is a bit of a trial to be absolutely honest. So I'm just working through that. I'm going to do a few separate videos on the controller board and getting it set up because it's fairly complicated and I just want to spend a bit of time there. Okay, well let's take a look at it now. Well, here we are back again. The new motors with integrated lead screws have arrived and I've put them in <clears throat> and we've got just enough clearance there so the other one is across there as well when they turned up one of them had suffered poorly from the trip I've managed to uh, straighten that up not too bad now and it's only only particularly bad at the top here and I, in all honesty um, because this is held in so tightly I don't think it's going to be an issue um, so that looks good so in the last episode my old printer had uh, the power supply had uh, crapped itself out so I ended up actually ordering a new power supply for it. So I am able to print again now. So I've printed more of these uh, cable chain links and I'll have to print a few more yet. And I'm just printing out the end bracket here. I will share a um, link to it if I haven't already but um, it comes in three lengths so I'm just sort of printing out the middle one to see which one I'm going to need to use. Once the new lead screws came in I sort of tightened this all up so it's uh, sort of tight and ready to go. One thing I found getting an allen key into here to tighten up the, the uh, screw in here the ones I have just don't fit in. Um, where are we? That's not deep enough and that doesn't have any clearance. So what I'm going to do is get another one from the hardware and basically just trim this to the point where it will fit in so I can tighten it up because there's no, I've fiddled around with this for, age, for an age with it just down like that and didn't get anywhere so these four screws are the two on this side and the two on the other side are very awkward to get in but I think it's just a matter of making your own tool so now that we're sort of getting closer I've started thinking about cable management these motor cables I think I'll just go over the front and then run the cables up inside here and print a couple of little strips to clip in there and hold hold it in same for the other side here the bottom ones when I put these motors back on I sort of had the foresight to have the connector come out the back here and um, I think the same thing here, I'll just bring it around under and, and underneath in the channel here and out to the back. I've actually got the extruder mounted up now 
Look, one thing I have found, and I think it's just the quality of this print is not fantastic. When I tried to fit this um, limit switch, it was tight as, tight as all get out. And, uh, you yeah, know, caused me quite a bit of problem. I had to do quite a bit of filing of the of, of here to get it to actually fit and everything like that. It does work, although you can see we've got some clearance issues here. With where I've brought the cables up from the hot end. I'm going to change that. When, once I've finished, I will print another version of the of this holder with some probably tie down points here for cable ties and bring everything up a little bit tidier and the same thing here for the BL touch wiring and I'm going to need to put something on top here for the cable chain attachment anyway so I'll have another shot at this I suppose <clears throat> but I suppose the one of the things that I did notice is if we run this back to its extent um, you can see the hot end is sort of well forward on that build plate so what I'm going to need to do is move the build plate forward which I can there's plenty of space to move it forward there's enough clearance for the extruder to come all the way forward here which obviously has it well off the build plate so I can be, certainly bring the build plate forward and still get the full travel which is great I'm not too sure if I had these optical limit switches mounted up previously however they are they are now so that's looking good the other thing I found on Thingiverse was a um, cable reel um, holder so these are just using bearings here when I look at the tube here off the um, extruder feed I actually think it will work pretty well just straight off the reel and into it in all places so pretty happy with that I guess the other thing that I've been playing with is the dreaded power supply that arrived all mangled I've straightened out the mounts and was planning to mount the power supply essentially like that on here so using these two holes here and the one hole down the bottom here along here I've got to actually drill these out just slightly more I think they're five mil screws I think that might be four at the moment but that's okay I printed a, a cover um, that just sort of nicely fits around um, the power supply um, just for safety and um, left a hole here where I'll actually mount the uh, plug receptacle and there's a switch and an integrated fuse now the slicer settings I had on the set up at the moment when I printed this weren't or was set not to provide support for bridges so I sort of rushed out when I saw it got to this point and tried my best to just hold that up so it wouldn't droop too much when it printed and I must have pushed this side in a little bit and it's actually put a bit of a sort of a layer thingy there um, and it still has drooped a bit anyway so I think I might just whack a little bit of glue sort of along here to strengthen it up 
before I mount the and file this down so that the the um, assembly fits in here properly. Or I might just print and reprint the damn thing. But um, look, it's it's quite secure and everything like that. <clears throat> uh, I just designed this up on Fusion 360. So air vents at the front here because there were a row of air vents above here. Um, so the idea is that yeah, it's going to mount up there. Power switch will be here. I'm going to pick that up later today and get that mounted up. <clears throat> Haven't mounted the power supply because I just want a little bit of room here when I fiddle around getting this cable chain sorted out. I'm thinking I'm going to put the control board up here in this zone. I've got quite a few cables coming along here um, from the cable chain and the one motor and also the ex all the extruder cables are probably going to come back to a cable chain that attaches somewhere around here so I'm sort of thinking keep the <clears throat> controller sort of pretty handy to that. I did look at printing out a case for the controller however it won't fit on the print bed of the Delta so it's going to have to wait till here so this is going to be a massive crap just hanging out here to get it going and then once it's going we can print an enclosure for it. Okay so the other thing I've been looking at is the actual controller, the display, getting Marlin set up on this. This is a uh, one of the big tree SKR 1.3 boards with a touch screen and I'm using or drivers that support SPI. I'm trying to just look at keeping it quiet. It came loaded with Marlin but I've um, had a bit of a play around with it and I've actually got it set up for Core XY and actually have the motors going and everything like that. One thing I did notice I ordered five drivers for this board and needless to say four have turned up so yeah look this is just starting to really piss me off I've got to be honest on the whole these these guys are great to deal with and then every now and again there's just little bloody shitty things like that just to piss you off anyway XY the two Z drivers I may order another one for the extruder or I may just um, you know whacking a different driver there it will handle it no problem at all and I've got spare ones around for the other robots that I made and things like that so I may just grab one of those I'm not too sure yet anyway this is probably apart from printing bits and pieces and trying to get the rest of it together I'm also trying to look at getting Marlin set up now it's a bit of a rigmarole but getting there I will make a couple of videos because this stuff is not super straightforward, you know, getting the different drivers set up and all that sort of thing. I'm hopeful that through the week I can spend a bit more time on this and at least get the motion side of it sorted out and actually go and plug it into the actual printer and start looking at the calibration of, um, you know, steps per millimeter and all that sort of guff on the actual printer itself okay so that's a bit of an update of where i'm at at the moment okay cheers for now if you like what i'm doing then please do like the video if you'd like to see more then please subscribe and don't forget to hit the chime so you get notified when i post something new and i'll put a couple of links here to some other videos you can look at.